Father, you are holy, worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be praised. Father, teach us your ways, Lord, that we may rely on your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, we may take our seats. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. yes, we want to thank God. Yes. We who are in Christ Jesus are in a position of rest. We who are in Christ Jesus, we are in a position of rest. For those who walk by sight are never at rest. Because then their hearts are focused on worldly things. But those who walk by faith, they are in a position of rest. For rest can only be found by those who are in Christ Jesus. Outside of Jesus Christ, there is no rest. For those whose minds are governed by the flesh, they are never at rest. They are never at rest. For their hearts are focused on those things that are temporary, the worldly things. Even as the word of God says, where a man's treasure is, so is their heart. So when your treasure is worldly, your heart is also on the world. And those whose hearts are on the world, they are never at rest. For one to be restful, they ought to be in Christ Jesus. Only those whose lives are with Christ in God are in a position of rest. For rest in the Lord is not of the flesh, but it is a thing of the heart. Rest in the Lord is a thing of the heart, not that which the world can give, but it is a thing of the heart. If we are to rest in the Lord, we ought to give all to God by loving him with all our hearts, all our soul, and all our strength. Unless you commit all your heart to God, you can never be at rest. Only a peaceful heart is at rest. Only where there is the peace of God is there rest. Not when you derive peace from worldly things that are temporary such as money, houses, cars, worldly wealth, can never give you permanent rest. Only when you derive peace from God, even as the Lord says, peace I give unto you, not as, as the world gives, give I unto you. For those who have overcome the world are always at rest, for then their lives are not dictated to by the world. Their lives are not dictated to by the world. When the world changes, they are never changed. They remain rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. For only those who delight themselves in the Lord, who delight themselves in the word of God, are rooted and grounded in the word of God. You cannot find rest anywhere else other than in the Lord. For those who have ceased to live by the law are at rest. 
for the law is always about do this, do not do this, a rule here, a rule there. That's all about the law. For those in Christ Jesus, they no longer walk according to the dictates of the law. For when you read the word of God in Romans 7 from verse 9, there we are told by Paul where he says, I was alive once without the law. Yet when the commandments came, sin sprang to life and I died. Meaning wherever there's law, there's death. For those who are slaves of law, who are those who are found to be ruled by the law, they are slaves. For such are those who find themselves being directed by what the law says and not what the Lord says. For Christ Jesus is the end of the law. He is the end of the law. When we read in Romans 10 from verse 4, we are told that the culmination of the law is Christ Jesus. For what the law could not do, God did by sending his son to die for the sinner. In so doing, he set aside the old to bring the new. He delivered us from the bondage that the law brought, the bondage of sin. That's why in 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 54, where we are told that when the perishable is put on imperishable and when the mortality is put on immortality and then the saying becomes true which says, Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But we thank God Almighty, our Heavenly Father, who gave us victory, victory through Christ Jesus. We are no longer bound by law. We are no longer those who walk according to the dictates of the law. But we walk according to the dictates of faith. The dictates of faith. For until faith came, all those who lived then, all those who lived before that time, they found law to be their guardian. They were under the custodianship of the law. The law was their guardian before faith came. They lived by what the law said. But when faith came, the guardian was set aside for those who are in Christ Jesus. For only those who belong to Christ, who are in him, are children of God. And if you be one who is in Christ Jesus, then you are a seed of Abraham, an heir to the promise. For such are those who are circumcised, not by human hands, but who are circumcised by Christ. We have put to death the old self and put the new self who walks by faith and not by sight. If you read Galatians 3 from verse 23, for when you die to the world, you become alive unto Christ. Those who have died to the world are alive to Christ Jesus. 
they are alive to Christ Jesus. For we who rest, we don't rest in the physical. We don't rest in the flesh. But our rest is from the inside. It is the word of God that gives us rest. It is his word that gives us rest. We are not directed by what the law says, but by what the word says. Yet you find many seeking to rest the flesh and not the spirit. It is only when you have peace that you have rest. Peace is not of the outward body. Peace is for the inner man. Those who continue to worry about worldly things, those who continue to be anxious about worldly things, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I put on? Where shall I get a job? When can I get married? They are never at peace. And therefore, they are never in a position of rest. They are never at rest. For when you are focused on the world, you can never be at peace. That's why the Lord says, why do you worry of worldly things? He says, why worry of worldly things? Why do you worry when you have all that you need in Christ Jesus? Is life itself that you have not better than anything that you can ever imagine? Why then do you worry? Why do you worry? If the birds of the air, which do not harvest, are provided for, how much more you? If the grass can be so clothed that even Solomon in his splendor did not have such apparel, how much more you? Why do you worry? Why do we worry? A troubled heart is never at rest. A troubled heart is never at rest. Many today, they find themselves flocking to assemblies because to them it is a day that is so valuable and precious. They have even ceased to do anything, even to cook, because to them, they will be committing sin if they do so. Tell your neighbor, one in Christ Jesus, is Lord of Sabbath. When you are in Christ Jesus, you are Lord of Sabbath. For Sabbath was meant for them to rest. Not to rest as one would want to look at it, but it had a purpose for which God said, let there be Sabbath, which you must observe. Unless you enjoy the Sabbath rest, which can only be found in Christ Jesus, you will continue to live under the shadow and not in the reality. For the law 
which says thou shalt observe the Sabbath day, for it is holy. For on the seventh day God rested from his works. Was meant for them to acquaint themselves with the Lord. For God knew that without the law to teach them in the way, to discipline them, they were bound to go astray. For the law was not there in the beginning, but it only came because of the transgression of many. Right from the onset, when we read Genesis 2 from verse 1, where we are told that when God had created all, when he had finished all his works of creation, he rested. He rested and he sanctified that day to be holy. The day when he finished the works. If I may ask, is God resting? Is God not working? Is God working or not working? Can we, those who say he's working, raise up hands. I said those who say he is working, raise up hands. Those who say he is not working, raise up hands. Those who are confused, raise up hands. <laughs> All right, put it another way. There are seven days in a week. And there's one day where others set aside. Not that we want to judge them, no. But it's really for us to know what the Lord says. Because we don't judge. As long as it's done by faith, it is okay. Whatever is done by faith is what? Okay. Any day that you choose to worship is okay. But for the question, does God work on a Saturday? Yes. Eh? Yes. Um, but I ask it, those who say yes, raise up hands. What of the other six days? Does he work again? Yes. Eh? Yes. But the Bible says he rested. Eh? He, the Bible says he rested. The Bi that's why the Bible says the Bible says he finished his works and he rested. Eh? He rested. Eh? What is it? Resting means you are taking a break. You can still proceed to work again. Oh, so he took. So he took a break. Yeah, he does. He doesn't say so, he so, stopped. So, so he can still take a break. Yes. Eh? Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> He says taking a break does not mean you have stopped working. Eh? Who agree? Who agree? Raise up hands. Okay, so, so God takes breaks. Ah, but you have said yes, so. Eh? You know, we need to go into the word because everything we need to examine it in the light of God's word. Those who say, he sometimes rest, takes a break just to eh, raise up hands. Eh? Because the Bible says, and he, he finished his works and he rested. And he what? He rested on the seventh day. He rested. He rested. Ah. What is he saying? Uh, I think it only means that he had completed uh, creating the world, not that he had rested. But the, the Bible says he finished his works and he rested. That's what the Bible says. Rested. R E S T E D. <laughs> eh? What do you want to say? I'm saying God is the rest is the other name for God. 
in Christ we, are, we find rest. Ah, rest is not that, it's not the other name for God, but he rested. I think he finished everything. Eh, he finished, eh, you don't think he said he, he finished. Don't even think of that. He, the Bible says he finished. He finished his work and rested. R-E-S-T-E-D. Eh? He was now at peace because he had finished everything. He was content. When he looked at all creation, he was content. There was nothing else to add. In other words, he was full of contentment. There was nothing else to add or to subtract from creation. Eh? He, that's why he looked at it and said, it is good. It is what? Good. He was contented. He was content. In other words, as the brother said, he was at peace. He was content. You know, when you are content with what God created you, you look at yourself, you don't want to add anything or to subtract anything. But when you are not content, when you look at yourself, you say, hey, you will not be at peace until you do something. Until what? You make a plan. Okay, let's support it scripturally. The Bible says, he never slumbers. He who looks after us. He never sleeps. Which, which scripture? Eh? Psalms what? 121. For he is our helper. The Bible says his eyes are to and fro the whole earth to show how strong he is on those who are committed to him. Those who obey him. Which scripture? Eh? 2 Chronicles 16 verse what? 9. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. And when the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he had healed that man on the pool of Bethsaida, who for, for 38 years, he was crippled. And when he started to walk, you remember that one, where the Lord says, do you want to get well? He says, hey, each time I want to go in, someone already is in. When the angel comes to see us, you know, when he healed. They wanted to kill the Lord. Is that so? They were plotting to kill him. But the Lord says, as my father is always at his work, so also the son continues to work. For the son cannot do anything of his own but he can only do that which he sees the father doing. And the father loves the son. That's why he shows him his works. So greater works shall be done by the son. Because his father will show him greater works. As the father raises the dead to life, so also the son will do. So he says, as my father is always at work. Always at what? At work. Not sometimes, but always at work. What if when God is sleeping, taking a nap, you are being attacked at that very moment? Those who go to sleep, they sleep at night. Not during the day. We are children of light, not of darkness. If we be children of light, there is no sleeping. My spirit is never asleep. My spirit is always awake. But in a position of rest. In a position of what? Rest. Because I have peace. Because I have 
peace. Though my hands could be working, my spirit is at rest in Christ Jesus. My spirit is always at rest. In Christ Jesus. Hey, if we had some confusion here. So those who say God is always at work, raise up hands. Those who say he is sometimes not at work, raise up hands. Those confused. You are now clear. That's why the Lord says you must rightly divide the word of truth so that you know what he says. Otherwise, you'll just follow any wind of doctrine that leads you nowhere. Was many conscience will say, eh, I think, eh, because I don't worship on this particular day, I think I may be committing sin. Eh? True or false? You must look to why God appointed that day is the Sabbath. He never said so to Abraham, the father of faith. Because Abraham walked by faith, not by sight. It was after Abraham's era that the law came. We are joined to Christ not through Moses, but through Abraham. Eh. Because we are not descendants of Israel. All Gentiles are connected at the level of Abraham the friend of God, by faith. By faith. If it be by doing the law, then you would be seeking to be connected by Moses. Only if you be a descendant of Israel can you be connected at that level. Uh, not that we discount Moses' error because whatever he wrote he was writing about Christ Jesus so when we see the law and all their ordinances we see Christ Jesus for only in Christ Jesus were the requirements of the law fulfilled only in Christ Jesus were the requirements of the law fulfilled. The requirements of the law, which is righteousness. Which is righteousness. Being right with God. Being right with God. More confusion. Eh? Unless you know what the law is, you may never be in a position of rest. But when you talk to Paul in Romans 13 from verse 8, there we are told not to have any other indebtedness remaining amongst us other than the debt to love one another. For all the commandments, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, you know, you, know, you must honor the Sabbath, observe the Sabbath and all. They are all summed up in one law. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Whoever loves their neighbor 
you have fulfilled all the law. For love never seeks to do harm to anyone. Love does no harm to a neighbor or anyone. For when we talk of neighbor, one is not talking about those who are, whose houses are close to yours. But everyone is your neighbor. Everyone that you come into contact with is your neighbor. Whether staying far or near, they are all your neighbors. So no matter how many commandments, laws and ordinances, they are all summed up in that one. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. You cannot love them unless you love God. And to love God is to obey his word. To obey his command. And his command is, as the Lord says, a new commandment I give unto you, love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. By this, that's what he says in John 13 from verse 34. He says, by this, which is loving one another, shall all men know that you are my disciples. You are known to be of Christ. Not by obeying the Ten Commandments, but by love. By love. By love. When you love God with all your heart, with all your heart, you can only love him by being a doer of the word. Doing the word and obeying the law are two different things. Where there is law, there is always fear of punishment. Where there is law, one is restrained from doing something because of fear of the consequences that, that would arise should you be caught. Those who are under the law have their lives regulated by the law. Don't do this, do this. They are not free, but they are slaves. They are in bondage. They do not do certain things only on account of fear. As in the olden times, where the word was, or the command was, anyone who breaks the Sabbath would be put to death. Eh? That's what he says. He says, no one should care, carry a load on that day, either from their house or into the gates of Jerusalem. Anyone who does so will be put to death. The era that we are in is an era of grace. Did you ever hear where the Lord says, anyone who breaks this will be put to death? For the Lord then was a guardian unto the children of Israel. But when faith came, we are free of the guardian. Because we are now in Christ Jesus. And those who are in Christ Jesus are children of God. And if you belong to Christ, then you are a seed of Abraham. And therefore, a joint heir of the promises. You are an heir of the promises. Yet many, you'll find them, don't touch they even eat stale food. 
They even eat stale food. Stale food. Stale food. It's one thing if you choose to fast. For on the Sabbath, the Bible says, you must deny yourself. You must fast. For it is a day of your atonement. You must not eat. You must deny yourself. That's what the word says. But many, they will rush to cook, 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 cook on a particular time. Is that freedom? Jesus Christ set us free for our freedom. Is that freedom? Is that freedom? The Sabbath was meant for rest in the Lord. To know who God is. Not to rest seated. It was a sign between the Israelites and God. So that the children of Israel would come to know God the more. Would come to know God the more. Read Ezekiel 20 from verse 9. It was meant, he gave them the Sabbath as a day that they would acquaint themselves to the Lord to know him more. He made it holy so that they also may strive to become holy, to know him. Unless God had set aside a day for them, they would never have known how to worship him. You must realize that the children of Israel, they were not led by the Spirit of God as we are. That's why the Bible says, to Moses he made known his ways, but to the children of Israel he made known his acts. They were carnal. They did not have the spirit of God in them. They were not the temples of almighty God, but we are. But we are. We are led from the inside. But they had the tutor as the law. But we have our teacher as Holy Spirit. Who is in us and with us. Eh? We are directed by Holy Spirit. He is our guardian. He is our teacher. He is uh, hmm? Are you confused? Those who are led by the Spirit of God are not under the law. That's why the Bible tells us that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are, Christ, who are in Christ Jesus who walk not according to the senses but who walk according to the Spirit. If I walk according to the Spirit, if my mind is ruled by the Spirit and not by the flesh, then I am not condemned. Then I am not what? Condemned. For what the law could not do was done through Jesus Christ to set me free from the law of sin and death. For the law brought sin and it brought death. I was set free from that law of sin and death. Read Romans 8 from verse 1. I was set free. And therefore, I am no longer one under the law. For one who remains under the law is a slave of sin. Because the power of sin is the law. As long as you are under the law, sin 
remains powerful and therefore you remain under sin and not under grace. Eh? If that day was so important, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would have expanded on it. We take what the Lord came to do, the word from him. He came to announce the gospel unto us. And that gospel is what we speak, we confess and meditate upon. Unless you see the fulfillment of the Sabbath in Christ, it is all nothing. The day that we focus on now is today. Eh? eh? Those who are of faith, who walk by faith, are always in today. Their rest is today. Meaning, they always stay current. They always what? Stay current. Their restful position is not dictated to by a particular day of the week. But they are always in a position of rest 24 7, 365 days a year. Me. I don't know about you. The issue is what gives you rest? Okay, let's just read the word. Let's go to Exodus 31. Uh, and don't make the mistake of we are not we are not seeking to judge anyone. We don't judge our brothers. We know there are those who honor Saturday. I mean, but all we are saying is what the word says. Eh? We don't judge anyone, but it's for our own enlightenment. Okay, let's just read from verse twelve. My heading here says the Sabbath. It says. Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbath, my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy, so that you may know. Eh? Eh, you see, you must read the word in context. He says, he says, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generation to come. So you may know that I, eh, that I, I am the Lord who makes you holy. So that you may know. Ah, uh, yeah. You know, it's a uh, common sense here. Yeah. When you read the word, eh? what is the Lord saying in simple terms? By just you, can I have a oh, Sabbath? Eh? It's a day, isn't it? Unless they were to be acquainted with the Lord, they will not know him. So it was a day that they were forcibly set aside in order for them to, that they would gather. Did you come here because you wanted to obey the law? Or because of your love for Christ? Love for Christ, because you want to know God. You want to know God, that's why you are here. But they would gather together because of the law that you must gather. 
Otherwise, you know the children of Israel, how busy bodies they were. Eh? Very busy bodies. Always minding about food and all. Eh? But they had to be taught by God. Do you know even going to Egypt and being slaves, the Lord says they were supposed to learn what it is to be slaves in a foreign country. So that when strangers also dwell, dwell amongst them, they would know how to treat others who are foreigners amongst them. They would know. Unless you have been a slave of sin before, you may not know how to treat others in a manner that is befitting before Christ. It's always those who think, but who do not know, who think that they were born righteous, who are troublemakers in the church of God today. Such are those that you find to be full of pride. When they take mic and start to speak, they say, hey, I was born righteous. I was born again from infants. So listen to me, that's what they say. They ascribe whatever they've achieved to their own efforts. Whereas if you know your past, you will not stand to be proud because you know your past will catch up with you. You do know. That's why Paul says, me who is the least worse than the least of all saints. That's what Paul says. Because I was persecuting even the church. When we all look to our past, we don't want to look again. And you know when you stand being boastful, those who may be seated quietly say, hey, you John Chip, we know you. But when I stand straight with Christ, you find no chance of referring to my past. But the moment I stand boastful, you'll say, hey, you, hey. we know, we know you. So you'll find no reason to boast other than to stay under the protective covering of Jesus Christ. So this is what we find today in churches. Problems. Problems. Let's read. He says, Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. He says, It is holy to you. Observe it. Anyone who desecrates it is to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days work is to be done. But the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest. Hmm. Holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and was refreshed. The Bible says he rested and was refreshed. Refreshed was someone fanning him. <laughs> <laughs> eh? Did he go into a bathroom and wash and bath? He says, when the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tab tablets of the covenant law, the tablet stone inscribed by the finger of God. Do you remember that uh, this is the Mount Sinai where 
they could not even look at the Lord. And what they had caused them even to fear to build up in them. Where we are told we have not come to that mountain where the voice of God thundered and induced fear in many, but we've come to Mount Zion, which is full of angels, myriads of them, myriads of them, the mountain of grace, not of law. They could not dare listen to those words because with every commandment, it was one who does not do it will be killed. One, so why don't they do exactly as the, the Bible says? Why? Why you want to, uh, to be prostitutes? Because the Bible says one who does not obey must be put to death. Must be put to death. That's what he says. Eh? Okay, let's just read uh, re, re, you know, Hebrews, Hebrews 12. Let's read from verse 18. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire to darkness, gloom, and storm to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word be spoken to them because they could not bear what was commanded. Yeah, they could not bear what was commanded. Anyone who desecrates the Sabbath will be killed. Say, so, ah. Uh, so if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. Mm. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous, made perfect, to spirits of the righteous, made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the, to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Hmm. Eh? Is it making sense? So when we know we have come to the city of God, we know that there we live by grace and not by law. We live by grace, not by law. For those in Christ Jesus, they have ceased to live by the law. But they now live by grace. They live by grace, not by law. Many do not understand why God brought in the law. For the law was a guardian until faith came. Until faith came. For the Sabbath the rest came by law where they were told thou shalt rest on the seventh day. 
you will rest on the seventh day. Not so for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because they are always in a position of rest. Is God ordered by the calendar of man or by the calendar of eternity? For when we read 2 Peter 3 from verse 8, there we hear that to God a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. For to him there is no light or darkness. How can you measure a day if there is no distinction between light and darkness. How can you measure to say, eh, hey, this is one day, that is the next day, and this and so on and so on. How can you? For those who dwell in the light of God, there is no night there. There is always light. And no night, no darkness to those in Christ Jesus. For to him, there is no night. It is all light. And those who dwell in the Lord, they dwell in his light. And therefore, they are not dictated to by which day they ought to worship God. Where you hear, this is the day that you must worship him. Tell your neighbor again, one in Christ Jesus, one in Christ Jesus. Is, Lord is Lord of Sabbath. Unless you know that you are Lord over everything, even the days of the week, you remain a slave. And a slave has no permanent residence in the house. But a son does. Those who have come to know truth, who have been set free for their freedom. Those who have been set free for their freedom. For when you look at what God did, that's why he gave them manna for two days. So that they don't work on the Sabbath. In order for them to acquaint themselves with the Lord. He wanted them to acquaint themselves with the Lord. When we read, it should be Exodus 16. From verse 27. The Bible says, Others sought to take more or even go on other days to try and pick manna. He gave them bread. But when they went on days which were not appointed, they could find none. They didn't find any. Because they were disobedient. For the Lord gave them the commandments in order to see what was in their heart, to see whether they would obey God. He gave them manna in order for them to have more time to acquaint with the Lord. To have more time to acquaint with the Lord. One can never be at peace with God unless justified by faith. Unless you are justified by faith, you can never be at peace with God. Not faith in anything else other than faith in Christ Jesus. For him is our peace. Jesus Christ is our peace. 
For he made the two groups one. He made them one. The, he broke the barriers and removed the hostility that existed between the two. Through his body on the cross, he made the two one. And then for making peace with God. If you read Ephesians 2 from verse 14. So now we both have got access to God. Through the one spirit. For he preached unto those who were near peace. He preached peace to those who were near. And he preached peace to those who were far. He is our peace. Unless you have peace with God, you are never at rest. You can never have rest unless you have peace with God. For only when there's peace are you able to relate with God. If you are not at peace with God, you are at war with him. You are at war with him. When you read Isaiah 30 from verse 15, where we hear that that says the sovereign Lord, this is what he proclaims. He says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. So when you are in the Lord, resting in the Lord, that's when you find salvation. When you trust God in quietness, that's when you are strengthened. That's when you are strengthened. Those who are to do any work, they ought to do it through Christ Jesus who strengthens them. If you do the work of your own accord, out of your own ability, might and strength, then you remain one under the law. We are only Lord of Sabbath if we be in Christ Jesus. Outside of Christ are those who remain under the law. Unless you are in Christ Jesus, you must observe Sabbath. If you are not in Christ Jesus, you must observe Sabbath. Tell your neighbor, if you are not in Christ Jesus, you must observe the Sabbath. Not only the Sabbath, but all the commandments, the law, and their ordinances. But the just must, must live by faith, not by the law. The just lives by faith and not by the law. For faith does not come through the law. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the message about Jesus Christ. Those who are not attentive to the word of God are those who require the law. A rule, a rule here, a rule there. Do this, do that. A little here, a little there. For the Bible says, to whom is he trying to teach? To whom is he explaining his message? To who? But to those who are infants. Those who are weaned, children weaned from the milk. 
taken from the breasts. He says, but with stammering lips and foreign language, you'll speak to them. And you'll proclaim his rest to them, rest to the weary. Those who listen to him. But to those who are not attentive to his word, you'll give the law. You'll give the law. The law is for the disobedient, not for the obedient. The law is for the lawbreakers, not for those who do not break the law. Let's read Isaiah. Isaiah 28 from verse 9. It says, Who is it he is trying to teach? Question mark. To whom is he explaining his message? Question. Question mark. To children weaned from their milk? To those just taken from the breast? Question mark. For it is, do this, do that. A rule for this, a rule for that. A little here, a little there. Very well then. With foreign lips and strange tongues, God will speak to these people. To whom he said, this is the resting place. Let the weary rest. And this is the place of repose. But they would not listen. So then the word of the Lord to them will become, eh, he said, to whom is he referring to here? Those who do not listen. He says, so then the word of the Lord to them who do not listen will become. Do this, do that, a rule for this, a rule for, for that. A little here, a little there. So that as they go, they will fall backward. They will be injured and snared and captured. The law is not meant for a true believer, a doer of the word. But the law is meant for the unbeliever, the carnal mind. Such are those who live by orders. Do this, do that. Don't do this. A rule here, a rule there. So if we know that Abraham, he lived by faith and not by the law, we too must seek to live by faith and not by the law. Tell me where the Lord, outside of the law, appointed the Sabbath to be observed. For many want to be like God when they don't do any work, any work. Yet even the Son of the Living God, He was working when He came. Yet themselves. They will seek not to do any work. You know, any work. Because it's Sabbath. To them it's holy. Their holiness is on the outside, not inside. For it is only those who are obedient to God's word. Those whose hearts allegiance is on the word who are holy in the eyes of God for holiness springs from righteousness those who are right with God those who are right with God for we are told that one is a slave to whatever he give themselves, to whoever they give themselves as their master. If you are a slave to sin, 
it leads to destruction. But if you are a slave to obedience, it leads to righteousness. So by the teachings of Christ Jesus, by obeying the word, not the commandments, but the word, remember the law of God then was not the word of God. The law then, it is only the word of God if you see Christ in it. Eh. Eh? Unless you see Christ in whatever scripture you read, it is not the word of God. It was only when we saw reality in Christ Jesus. That the law became the word of God. And how? When all the law and the, all the ordinances were summed up in one. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then, and only then, the law became the word of God. For then the veil was removed. It was only when the veil of our hearts was removed. That we saw Christ in the law. Only then the, the commandments of God became the word of God. Are you clear there? The law is just the law then was not the word of God. The law stand alone if you just confine yourself to the Old Testament, it is not the word of God. It is the word of Moses. <laughs> eh, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus. You know, read John chapter 1. Read that whole, you know, it will, it's so beautiful. It will open your eyes. The law came by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus. And truth is the word of God. And the word of God is Christ Jesus. So, the law was not the word of God. Only when Christ came as we now read it with, op with our eyes enlightened, that we see Christ in them. And then the law became the word of God. Uh, are you clear there? The law at the time of Moses was not the word of God. It only became the word of God upon fulfillment in Christ Jesus. When reality came, it was a shadow of what things to come. That's what uh, uh, Colossians. Let's read Colossians 2. Let's just read from verse 16. I'll read. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon, celebration, or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. You can go on reading if you want. You can go on. Go. The reality, however, is what? Is found in Christ. Those were a shadow of things to come. And those things have come. Who is Christ Jesus? So unless you are in Christ Jesus, you, are, you remain in the shadow. Unless you are in Christ, you remain in the shadow. The reality is in Christ Jesus. When I stand here, when you stand there, 
I want you to touch her. Now she's touching the real. Eh? But now others are touching the shadow. Touch the shadow. Now, if, is she touching her? Eh? Others are continue to hold on to the shadow. And not what? Reality. The law was a shadow. And not the reality. Reality is in Christ Jesus. Can you talk to the shadow and be responded to? The shadow of Christ cannot respond to you. But the real Christ is one who can hear you and respond to you. Okay, thank you. So many are still holding on to the shadow. Yet reality is in Christ Jesus. If only they could listen to what he said. Because he is the reality and not what the law says. How can one continue to hold on to what the shadow says and not what the real one is saying? Why would one, what benefit would you derive by holding on to what the shadow says, which is the law, and not holding on to what the reality says, which is Christ Jesus? What does he say concerning Sabbath? When you read Matthew 12 from verse 1. There we hear when he was walking with his disciples. They were hungry and they started to pluck corn. You know, corn to eat and they ate. On a Sabbath, they did not only eat, but they plucked the corn. They plucked the corn with the... Right with the Jesus, he who he was God, who you could say he gave the Lord to Moses. He was there. And he was right there. When the law was given to Moses, he was there. And now he was there when the disciples were plucking the corns, eating on a Sabbath. On a Sabbath day. Why? Because they were hungry. They had not cooked the previous day because they knew that they would just plug the cones and eat. They were eating. And the Pharisee says, hey, look at what your, your disciples are doing. They are desecrating the, the Sabbath. They says, no one can work on the Sabbath. But the Lord says, you must go and learn what this Scripture says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. He says, don't you remember what David did when and him and his companions, when he was angry, he ate the consecrated bread, which was only meant for priests. He says, even the priests, on a Sabbath day, they again desecrate the Sabbath in the temple, yet they are, they are found innocent. He says, you must not seek to condemn the innocent. Do not condemn the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. These disciples were only with Christ. The era of being with and in Christ and Christ in them was not yet there. If the disciples then could do it, who only were with Christ? Ha! What more of those who Paul says, I was crucified together with Christ Jesus. Never, let, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me by faith. So if Christ is living in me, it means whatever I do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So if I'm doing whatever I do through Christ, it means it is Christ working through me. And if Christ is Lord of the Sabbath, it means me 
who is in Christ Jesus a branch in the true vine I am also Lord of the Sabbath for the Lord says the Sabbath was meant for men and not men for the Sabbath. In other words, he was saying it was not for the Sabbath to have dominion over men, but for men to have dominion over the Sabbath. So for those who are spiritual, those who walk by faith, they are not governed by what day they must worship. They are not governed by the ordinance, the law, the commandments. But they are regulated by the word of God. Remember, the law, unless fulfilled in Christ, is the word of Moses and not the word of God. Unless it's fulfilled in Christ, only then can it be the word of God. Only then can it be the word of God. Yet many are holding on. They still hold on to the law, the commandments. I'm no longer. I'm no longer. I'm no longer. A I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no God are those who are in a position of rest. Not those who have got confidence in the flesh. Those who have put their trust in fellow man. For such are those who are like a tree in a wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. But those who trust in the Lord, they are like a tree with its roots into the water. They will not care when heat comes. Their leaves will be forever green. Their leaves will be evergreen. They will bear fruit all the time. They will not fear when drought comes. But those who trust in man, they are those who, live, who are like a bush in a perched land, salt land without life. So unless we trust God, we may never find rest. It is those who, while it is called today, they will seek to worship God in truth and in spirit. Those who seek to worship God in truth and in spirit. You know, Jeremiah 17 from verse 5. To such are those whom he gave his Sabbath for a rest that they may know who he is. 
and he gave them manna, bread from heaven, so that they would not go out to look for food on the Sabbath, but commit all their time to God, that they may know who he is. That's why in Deuteronomy 8 from verse 2, where he says, during the time when you were in the wilderness, in the wilderness, God tested you and humbled you to see what was in your heart for 40 years. And he gave you manna, bread that you never knew, even your ancestors. That's why they, call it, they called it, what is this? The Israelites called it, what is this? What is this? They never knew it, even their ancestors, in order to teach them that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It was to teach them that they may acquaint themselves with the Lord. For one to find rest, you can only do so if you be in Christ Jesus. Anywhere else, there's no rest. You see, many, they rest on a particular day. They don't cook. They rush, rush, rush to cook, to do all sorts of things in preparation of what they term the Sabbath. The Sabbath is spiritual, is not physical. If you are to rest in the Sabbath, the Sabbath rest is spiritual and not physical. For one to relate with God, you must be in spirit and in truth. Not in the flesh, not in the physical. If we are to rest in the Lord, we must step into the spiritual realm. We must move out of the realm of the flesh and step into the spiritual realm. And there, only those who worship God in truth and in spirit are found. Those who look not to the flesh. Those who do not put confidence in the flesh. But those whose confidence is in the Lord. It is not for those who seek to put the body to rest. But it is for those who seek to rest in the Lord. Unless you find rest for your soul, you are never at rest. Only when you have peace of conscience are you at rest. Not when you just sit and do nothing and you say you are resting. You deceive yourself. You deceive yourself. It is only when you find rest in the Lord. That's why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in Matthew 11 from verse 25 where he says, I thank you, Heavenly Father, creator of the heavens and the earth, for you hid these things to those who are wise and learned and reveal them to those who are like unto children. He says, all things have been committed unto me. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to whosoever he chooses to reveal, to reveal him to. He says, come unto me, all you who are tired and heavy laden, 
and I'll give you rest for your souls. Learn from me, for I'm meek at heart. I'm gentle at heart. He says, learn from me. Learn from me. Take my yoke, for it is light. And you'll find rest for your souls. He says, come unto me. Meaning, only when you come to Jesus do you find rest. Only when you find when you come to Jesus do you find rest. For he clearly demonstrated that Sabbath was not meant for physical rest. But Sabbath was meant to usher us into the realm of faith, the realm of the spirit. It is a spiritual rest where one is content in all situations. It is only when you get to that position where you are content in all situations, where you rejoice always, where you continually pray to God, and where you give him thanks in all circumstances, knowing that that is his will concerning you in Christ Jesus. Only then can you enjoy the Sabbath the rest of the Lord. Unless you do so, you remain in the shadow and not the reality that is found in Christ Jesus. Many, if you go the world over today, starting Friday, they don't touch. They start from certain time. They don't do anything. They start not to do what? They prepare, prepare, even without fridge. If they are to eat, they eat cold food. They even are afraid to put on the microwave. I'm no longer a slave to see. I am a child of God. I am a child. Yes, I'm no longer. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm a long guy. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm a long guy. Unless you deprive sin of his power, you remain a slave of sin. You can only deprive sin of his power, which is the law, by coming to Jesus Christ with faith in your heart. It is not the law that gives faith, but the word of God. The message concerning Jesus Christ is that which gives faith. You know, Romans 10 from verse 17. Unless we come to Christ, unless we come to Christ, we remain a slave of sin. For as long as sin has got power, it will maintain its hold on you. And the power of sin is the law. It is only in Christ Jesus that we are given victory over sin, victory over death. For the moment you overcome sin, you have deprived death of its sting, which is sin. 
The moment you move out of the law, you have deprived the sin of his power, which is the law. And therefore, you will be victorious over sin and death. By being in Christ Jesus, who himself is the end of the law. So when you come to know that, you will live a, f a life of freedom, free from all the ordinances, the commandments. For he who fulfills love your neighbor fulfills all the law. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. We are here today. It's a Saturday. Eh? We are worshiping God. We are not observing the Sabbath. We are in the Sabbath rest Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In a position of rest. Though we may go about doing our work, yet we are in a position of rest. Because our rest is, on the, is, is in the inside, not on the outside. Our rest is of the inside, not of the outside. That's why the Lord said, if any one of you sheep falls to the pit, will you not go in and take it out? He says, will you not go, out, go in and take it out? So, for they tried to test him. You know, when you read that same... Uh, Matthew 12 there. They tried to, to test the Lord and say, is it right to do, to work on a Sabbath? And there was a man with a shriveled hand. And the Lord says, is it right to do good or evil on the Sabbath? They could not answer him. And he healed the man. And from there they sought to kill him. They plotted to kill him. Why? Because he did good. So if... Our nature is to do good always. We are not regulated by the law. Because good is good. If I'm cooking for myself because I'm hungry, it's good. It's good. Because the law says, is it good? Okay, let's read it. Okay, maybe let's read from verse 9. It says, going on from that place, he went into their synagogue. And a man with a shriveled hand was there, looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus. They asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? You see, is it lawful? Is it lawful to work on a Sabbath? Is it lawful? I'm not under the law. Don't ask me, is it lawful? Ask me if it's good or bad. My question is, is it good or bad? Not is it lawful? So they said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, if any of you has a ship and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is, good, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. To do good, not evil. To do what? Good. So if your nature, your character is to do good, to do what good is cooking for yourself, not for out of lasting for food, but out of need. Is it good? Is it good? When I need to eat to nourish my body, is it good? Good, yes, do it. 
rather than to eat stale food, cold food. Eh? Why do they bath themselves? Or maybe they don't bath. Eh? Why should they bath? Eh? Eh? Well, says don't do work. Eh, does it qualify what sort of work? Eh? So if it's don't bath, the clothes that you are putting on yesterday, you must remain putting them on. Eh, because I mean, it's work. Isn't it? It's work. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Yes, I'm no longer. I'm no longer a slave. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no longer. I am a child of God. Yes, I'm no beloved child of God peace will reign in your life you will be in rest you know when you read 1 Chronicles 22 you can read it from verse 5 when David went about preparing for the construction of the temple then he called his son Solomon and narrated to him what the Lord had said where he said my son this is what the Lord says he said, you will not, referring to David, he says, you will not build for me my temple because you have shed so much blood in my sight. But you will have a son whose name will be Solomon. He will build a temple for me. He says, he will be my child. He will be my son. I'll give him peace during his time. I'll give him rest. From every side, I will give him peace with all his enemies. He will not experience war. And if you read the whole Bible, not a single war during the time of Solomon. Not a single war that he fought. It says, him will build my temple. I will establish my covenant with him. His throne will endure forever. So when the Lord loves you, he will make you live at peace with your enemies. He will give you rest from every side. And our rest, we who are the beloved of God, is not in the physical, but in the spirit. When the power of Christ rests upon us, then we are at rest. Then we are at rest. Our rest is not of the physical. For our focus is not the physical things, but of the inner being. Our rest. The Bible says those of old, those of old, they could not enter into his rest because of unbelief. Because they did not receive the message with the faith of those who believed, those who obeyed. They did not receive the message with the faith of those who obeyed the word. That's why they could not enter into his rest. They could not enter into his rest. 
So when the Lord refers to a day, it's not a particular day. Otherwise, that day is past. When he finished creation many years ago, but he talks of today. For those who are in the spiritual, those who are in faith, the day that matters is today. Today. Let us, let us go to Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 7. I'll read. So as the Holy Spirit says, today if you hear his voice, underline that today. Is today today? Eh? Tomorrow will be today for others who will get there. But yours is today. Yours is what? Today. It says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. When your ancestors tested and tried me, you must read this in context where it says during the time of testing, it was not the time of testing for God, but it, he was testing the children of Israel, but they ended up what? testing the Lord. That's what he's saying there. He says, where your ancestors tested and tried me, though for 40 years they saw what I did, that is why I was angry with them, with that generation. I said, their hearts are always going astray, and they have not known my ways. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. Ha! Huh. They shall never enter my rest. My rest? What is the Lord saying? But his rest was when he finished creation. <laughs> eh? That's when he rested. Yet the, those children of Israel were not there. So unless they were there with him, that's when they could all, all end out into the rest. Okay, let's read on. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today. So that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Since we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end, as, as has just been said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Do not harden your hearts. Your hearts. Who were they who had and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who dis disobeyed. So we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Let's go to chapter 4. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have heard the good news proclaimed to us just as they did, but the message they had was of no value to them because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works 
have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day, God rested from all his works. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had, had the good news proclaimed to them, did not go in because of their disobedience. God again set a certain day calling it today. He set another day calling it what? Today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David as in the passage already quoted. Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your, your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. Mm, you can read one on at your own time. So, so, the Sabbath rest of the Lord is for those in Christ Jesus, not for everyone else. For those who are outside, the Bible says they are dogs. Those who are outside of Christ, they are what? Dogs. Those who are in the law are dogs. It's not me who said it's there in the Bible. Because others are looking at me like, uh, it's not me, I, it's not, I didn't say dogs. It's in the Bible. Okay, let's go to the Bible. Philippians 3, I'll read. Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It is no trouble for me to write the same things to you again. And it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, D-O-G-S. Those evil doers, those mutilators of the flesh, you know, mutilators of flesh, those who unnecessarily deprive the body of, of food. Eh? He says, Watch out for those dogs, those evil doers, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcised, who, we who serve God by His Spirit who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh. Though I myself have reasons for such confidence. You can read on at your own time. We don't put confidence in the flesh. Yet many would exert their flesh to unspeakable things. Okay, let's just read uh, to know what others do. Colossians 2. Verse 20 says, Since you died with Christ to the elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belonged to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not test, do not touch, do not work. These rules, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility, and their harsh treatment of the body, but they lack any value in restra restraining sensual indulgence. Hmm? So many will seek to subject their bodies 
to harsh conditions is a form of worship. Such are those who are still under the law. Not under the grace. Tell your neighbor, we who are in Christ Jesus are lords of the Sabbath. If you are in the Lord, it means everything has been subjected to you. Everything is under you. Everything. If you be in Christ Jesus, that's why the law only came after the transgression of man. Not before. Abraham, a man of faith, not a single law was he given. Not a single law. Not a single law was he given. Thou shalt, thou shalt know. The law is meant for the disobedient. Those who do not obey God, who are not attentive to his words. Those who are not attentive to his words. If we love God with all our hearts, we will also love God's children. And there's no need for the law when you are in the realm of the Spirit. If you are in the realm of the Spirit, you will not live under the law. For holiness is only for those in whom the word has claimed the full allegiance of their hearts. For such are those who are found to be right with God. They are slaves of righteousness and not of sin. They belong to Jesus Christ and therefore they've crucified the flesh and all its passions. They walk in step with the Spirit and not with the world. For the benefits of, benefits of righteousness is holiness that leads to eternal life. If you read Romans 6 from verse 16. So if we are in Christ Jesus, we are not under the law. If you are one under the law, then you must obey all of them. If you break one, you've broken all of them. Break one, no matter how minor, you've broken all of them. Those who are living under the grace, the grace are no longer under the law. The unmerited favor of God. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. That's where we belong. Those who are not under the law. So if I am no longer under the law, it means I am no longer a slave to sin. Those who are not slaves of sin, the Bible says, they are inhabitants of Zion, and they will not say, I am sick, for their sins have been forgiven. When I say I am not, when the Bible says, they shall not say I am sick, it doesn't mean sickness will not come knocking at the door. It will knock, but it will never be part of me. I will not embrace it by saying I am sick. 
For he says, let the sick say, I am healed. Let the poor say, I am blessed. Let the weak say, I am strong. It is us in the Lord. Us who belong to Jesus Christ. Who no longer live by the dictates of the law. But who are led by the Spirit of God. For God dwells in us by his Spirit. And it is his Spirit that guides us. That leads us. That directs us. And therefore, it's no longer do this, do that. A rule here, a rule there. A little here, a little there. For rules, ordinances, and commandments are for the disobedience, the non-believers, those who Paul refers to as dogs, evildoers, mutilators. But we, who are ruled by the Spirit, whose minds are governed by the Spirit, we walk in unison with the Spirit. For we abide in the true vine. We are the branches. And only in him are we fruitful. Our character is one with Christ. And therefore, we are also Lord of the Sabbath. As the body of Christ. Tell one about one who belongs. To Christ Jesus is Lord of Sabbath. One in Christ Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Unless you are born again, you cannot be Lord of the Sabbath. It is only those who are born again who are the new creation in Christ. As long as you remain the old self, you remain under the law. Do this, do that. You can never be Lord of the Sabbath. The disciples realized that. That's why they boldly plugged corn for eating. David knew that. That's why he boldly ate consecrated bread in the temple with his companions. Yet he remained innocent. The question is, why did he remain innocent? Because he lived in a different realm than them. He was in the realm of the spirit. If you remember David, a man that God says, a man after my own heart. Let us strive therefore to enter the rest of the Lord. Let us strive to enter the Sabbath rest by delighting in the word, obeying the word and not the law. His command is not burdensome. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. For the summation of all the commandments is summed up in that one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second one is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. In those two, the law and the prophets are fulfilled in those two. So you must know who you are in Christ. May the Lord bless you. May he bless his word. Well. So